Are you trapped in a payday illusion, wasting your hard-earned cash on fleeting pleasures? It's time to break free from fantasy and face reality. Every moment you squander is one step away from financial security. In this video, we'll tell you seven essential things to do when you get paid. One, reassess your net income. Most of us think of our net income as the income after taxes, but this is where we go wrong and overestimate the money we have. We need to first deduct any saving plans we have in place such as 401k or Roth IRA. The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Classen explains this concept so well. He calls this exercise of calculating your net income as paying yourself first. He says that it is essential to think of your savings as a bill and set aside your targeted savings in a separate account untouched, so that you get in the habit of living on the money you are left with. This way, any bonuses and salary increments will first go to your savings instead of getting splurged on impulse purchases. Suppose your monthly income is $10,000 after tax and you contribute $1,000 each month to a 401k. Then your real net income is only $9,000. Now, this is the money you have to spend, save, invest, and pay off your debt with. Being aware of the actual net income helps us in keeping our money goals more realistic and makes us more money mindful. So the moment you get paid, first calculate your real net income. Two, avoid taking on more debt. While most people will tell you to pay off your debt as soon as you get paid, you need to understand how debt repayment works. Debt repayment is supposed to make you debt free, not force you into taking on more debt. For example, every Friday when you get paid, go to the gas station and fill your tank up before you pay off your car payments. It sounds counterintuitive, but it makes a lot of sense. Suppose your car fills up in $1,000 and runs for the whole of next week. Spend that amount in cash at the station before doing anything else with your net income. Not only will this gear you up for all your work to office commutes in the coming week, but it will also prevent you from paying for gas using your credit card, which attracts almost 20% interest. Similarly, payday loans are also another super expensive yet highly popular credit used by around 12 million Americans annually. But instead of solving your money problems, these high interest credits bind you in debt shackles. The best way to avoid these bad debts is to create a calendar of all your incomes and spread your expenses in such a way that you spend only after you have cash in your bank accounts. You can even use debit cards instead of credit cards to stay within your means. This way, you avoid a new debt and spend only on necessities. Three, get groceries. People call it the coffee-nomics these days because cutting down on your outside food is one of the easiest ways of saving money. Also, eating healthier home-cooked meals helps you stay in shape, so you save on future medical bills and expensive gym memberships that you barely use. Let's crunch in some numbers. Suppose you have three cups of Starbucks's Grande Coffee Americano for $3.45 per cup each day. So, your total cost is $10.35 per day, or $310.50 per month. Then, you throw in a bagel for breakfast and a cheeseburger with some fries for lunch every day. This will cost you another $20 per day, or $600 a month, bringing your total food cost to $910.50 a month. And this is without considering dinner. Now compare it with the costs of making a coffee at home. Even after using the highest quality coffee grounds and including the costs of filter, electricity, water, and coffee maker, the same 16 ounce coffee would cost you only $1.80. This means you save 3.45 minus 1.80 equals $1.65 at least per cup of coffee or $4.95 a day and $148.50 a month. Simply by making coffee at home, even Warren Buffett's wife, Astrid Manx, said she wouldn't pay $4 for a cup of coffee when she could get a pound of coffee for that much. So, it's high time you looked into your coffee-nomics. Similarly, a bagel costs approximately 67 cents from the grocery store, 22 cents to make at home, and $2.10 at Dunkin' Donuts. This means even if you eat from the grocery store, your bagel costs you $1.50 less and saves you $45 a month. Likewise, your burger and fries meal would also cost you around $10 less per meal if you made it at home, leading to at least $250 savings in a month.
So in total, you can save around $148.50 plus $45 plus $250 which equals $443.50 a month by eating home-cooked meals. Therefore, after you've got your tank filled up, head straight to the grocery store and get your fridge filled up too. 4. Pay your bills Next up are your rent and utilities. Once you are all set for the coming week, pay your monthly bills. If you get weekly pay but bills are monthly, still set aside 25% of your bills every week in an envelope. Dave Ramsey is the biggest proponent of the cash envelope system. He suggests it's the best way to prevent going overboard on some expenses and having nothing left for others. In his approach, you first make a budget of how much you need to spend under various expense heads such as rent, utilities, and entertainment. Then you set aside that amount in various labeled envelopes. This way you earmark an amount for every expense. This prevents you from overspending on your entertainment because you know you will have to pull out some money from the rent envelope and then your landlord will kick you out at the end of the month. It bursts the bubble of having more money than you actually do as you budget your bills beforehand and know exactly how much you can spend on your wants after all your needs are taken care of. The psychology behind it is that when you see how much cash goes into your necessary expenses, you become more aware and try to cut down your unnecessary expenses. Also, it encourages you to find out your hidden expenses or renegotiate your bills. These have been eating into your income since eternity because you have never paid attention. By earmarking your money, you get a much clearer picture of where all your money goes, an essential step to knowing what you've been paying for till now but don't actually need it anymore, such as an unused OTT subscription or a costly old electricity plan that your landlord gave you when you rented the home five years ago. But if you don't earmark your needs, you neither avoid credit card debt nor find out any hidden expenses and simply spiral into the debt trap without knowing what actually hit you that hard. 5. Create an emergency fund While your rent and utilities are expected expenses, you never know when some unforeseen expenses come up. For example, as you commute to your work daily, there are higher chances of a car breakdown. Even the economy can cause you a major setback. Suddenly, if a pandemic like COVID-19 hits, you could lose your job or need hospitalization. You need to be prepared for such emergencies. As a rule, save six to nine months of your living expenses in an emergency fund in a separate account that you will never touch until it is an emergency. This money should be kept in the most liquid form as possible so you can access it immediately. But you should never save too much in this fund. The reason being, although cash in a bank creates liquidity for short-term emergencies, in the long run, you lose money due to inflation. So always keep only the necessary amount, but not too much. Also, stick to the true definition of an emergency. Buying an iPhone just because it is selling for 50% off is not an emergency. So never touch your emergency fund for such impulse purchases. 6. Pay your debt once you have a car full of gas, a fridge full of food, your bills are paid and your emergency fund is juiced up, only then can you pay your debt with whatever is left. At this point, you have taken care of all of your current and near future needs, so paying off some of your debt with any money left makes sense. This strategy prevents you from taking on more debt and also paying off your existing debt as quickly as possible. Suppose you have four loans on you. 1. A car loan of $20,000 at 10% interest. 2. A home loan of $100,000 at 4% interest. 3. A credit card bill of $1,000 at 20% interest. 4. A student loan of $5,000 at 7% interest. There are two ways you can pay off all these debts. 1. Debt Snowball Method this works best for most people because after following the first five steps, you barely have much left. So, you pay the smallest dollar amount of debt first. Under this method, you will pay off the credit card loan first irrespective of how much money you are left off because it is the smallest dollar amount. For example, if you have $5,000 left, you can pay off the student loan in full, but you would still only pay $4,000 off that and $1,000 from the credit card bill. The logic here is, just like a snowball gains size as it starts rolling down a hill, once your smaller debts are paid off, you no longer need to pay off your interest on those. Then, you can start paying the larger debts in larger chunks. 2. Debt Avalanche Method 
In this case, you pay the highest interest debt first, no matter how much the dollar amount. So, the faster you pay that, the more you save in interest and the faster you tackle the other debts too. Under this method, the first loan that you will pay off will be the credit card loan, because that attracts the highest interest. But after that, you will pay the car loan before you go on to paying your student loan, even if you have the same $5,000 left with you. While it may take a little longer to pay off some debts like this, it drastically reduces the interest you pay. Although both methods are effective, you should always calculate which leads to lower interest payments and then pay off in that order. Otherwise, you can also consolidate all your loans into a single loan and just make one payment to simplify the whole process. Achieve, Discover, and SoFi are some of the most recommended debt consolidation vehicles according to Forbes Advisor. 7. Balance your savings and entertainment Finally, once your debt is on track and getting paid off, you should start thinking about your retirement savings. You should set an annual savings target of 20% of your net income or higher if possible. Then, put whatever you are left after paying off your debt that month into an investment account till you don't meet that target. This way, even if you don't meet your annual targets for the first few years, you will still get into the habit of saving more, and it will automatically budget your entertainment and leisure activities. You wouldn't blow up all your money on movie tickets, but rather watch free movies in the park just so you could save for your comfortable future. Gradually, as you pay off more of your debt, you will be able to save faster. Once your savings target is met, you can also indulge in some paid entertainment but not so much that you don't save anything beyond your savings target. At this point, to keep a check on your leisure, you can start automatic investment plans. These plans invest some portion of your after-tax income each month in various markets through ETFs to earn you high interest for your retirement. In a way, like your 401k contributions, these also impact your net income, so you have less in hand to splurge. This way, you can start taking higher savings targets so that compounding works in your favor and helps you retire as early as possible.